We're speaking with Dr. Sonia Springfield, Director of the National Cancer Institute's Center to Reduce Cancer Health Disparities. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. As Director of NCI's Center to Reduce Cancer Health Disparities, you're obviously very committed to this issue. What sparked your interest in this area? As a matter of fact, training sparked my interest in disparities. Before becoming the Director of the Center to Reduce Cancer Health Disparities, I was chief of the diversity training branch at the National Cancer Institute. However, I was truly honored when the NCI leadership approved my bringing the diversity training branch into the center. I was delighted about merging these two offices, one in training and the other in disparities research, because it primed us to do some new and wonderful things in the center and for the communities we serve. Within the center, we have a single goal, and that goal is to eliminate cancer health disparities. Our mission is really both to strengthen the cancer health disparities research portfolio in basic, clinical, translational, and community-based research, and also to continue to lead NCI's efforts in the training of investigators from diverse populations in cancer and to spawn a new generation of cancer health disparities researchers from all populations. So we're very proud to be leading a number of major research and training initiatives across the nation that are having a strong impact on reducing the cancer burden that still affects far too many Americans. In your view, what are some of the most vulnerable populations to cancer health disparities? Some of our most Vulnerable populations are those who live in poverty and lack adequate health care coverage and other personal, social, and economic advantages. As a result, being able to take advantage of good quality cancer care is frequently a huge problem. One's access to education, certain occupations, health insurance, and living conditions, including exposures to environmental toxins, are all associated with the risk of developing and surviving cancer. These sorts of personal and environmental facts are frequently associated with increased risk for cancer and set the stage for unhealthy lifestyles. For example, it's frequently our most vulnerable populations that can't be active since neighborhoods are unsafe. They can't find healthy foods because they're not large grocery stores close by and suffer from other health problems that make it hard to work regularly. Some of our most vulnerable populations are also more likely not to be aware of the importance of screening for cancer and if they have cancer, are more likely to seek treatment with late stage diseases that might have been treated more effectively or cured if diagnosed earlier. Why do you think it's so important to train first generation cancer health disparities researchers? The training of first generation cancer health disparities research is critically important because these are individuals who not only make contributions to the science, but also serve as very special role models for others in their families and communities. First generation researchers show it's possible to overcome barriers and obstacles and achieve in fields of cancer research where others may not have dreamed to go. And after their training, these are the same individuals most likely to go back to their communities in order to give back in terms of their research and clinical practices to advancing the health and well-being of their own communities. First generation cancer health disparities researchers understand in a very unique way the challenges of changing a culture and changing a lifestyle in order to find their research potential. First generation cancer researchers have the perspective to understand why individuals from their group are not engaging in physical activity or getting routine cancer screenings. They understand firsthand how income and culture can play a role. 
training programs such as our CURE, the Continuing Umbrella of Research Experiences, provides a huge stepping stone for first-generation cancer health disparities researchers. The CURE programs opens up vast numbers of doors for them. The training program provided through the CURE enables these individuals to gain strong research skills in an environment that ensures that they can focus on their research. The CURE provides a very holistic approach to training. In addition to training, it provides coaching and life skills, such as job interviewing, grant writing and reviewing, to help ensure that these fledgling researchers have the broad skills needed to be competitive, independent cancer health disparities researchers. From your perspective, what can cancer researchers do to help eliminate disparities? Researchers can help to eliminate disparities by becoming more familiar with and enhancing their knowledge of the cultural factors and differences contributing to cancer problems seen with various underrepresented populations. Through community engagement, researchers can then begin to customize strategies to address these gaps and differences. Striving to identify and understand biological, genetic, behavioral, and environmental differences in cancers among populations, researchers can help to determine whether these differences actually lead to cancer disparities, and if so, design targeted interventions to reduce these cancer problems. Within the Center to Reduce Cancer Health Disparities at the, and at the National Cancer Institute, we support disparities researchers in our shared goal of overcoming cancer health disparities. Dr. Springfield, thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure.